Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to the Cheap Seats on 96.3 FM, streaming live on the web at WLCNOnline.com. You can follow us on Twitter at WLCN Sports. Our Twitter man is behind the camera. And we're on Facebook, so follow us and like us on there. Good morning, Scott Kirby, Joe Ryan with you at Joe Ryan Country Financial, downtown Lincoln. We are inside today because you can't have a, you know three or four days of nice weather. It's got to rain. Yeah, it's got to pour every day. And, and now, you know, it... it Hurts a lot of golf games too, Scott. It does, and it, it's not uh, golf much, but it, yeah. Well, you need help. <laughs> this <laughs> you is probably a, did a rain dance. So a bad golfer. Hurt. This is a great day. That's absolutely. It is graduation day, so congratulations to all those 2017 graduates. I know there's some hard people at work right now setting up for a party. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're listening, uh, I'd like to hear from them if they could call in over well, there from you know, North Logan Street. Mr. Sheely's one and, of uh, them, and I'm oh. sure he's probably just in the way. Yes, uh, but no, they're uh, they're all getting ready for that. The graduation's today at eleven o'clock. Hopefully, the rain stops. Is it still raining out there? Yeah. Hey, and that's for sure because that's from our guest. If he nods his head yes and it's raining, and it's raining. Yeah, that you know he knows. That's exactly right. We're not going to give away who it but is. But he yet. doesn't know that we know that he knows. <laughs> He's a smart guy. And that smart guy would be Dan Fosher. We're going to have him on here in a few minutes and. Uh, Get his knowledge. Well, the sports-related part of it is that Dan's going to talk first about uh, wrestling and his years of service and how what a big deal he is officiating. I went down there last year and watched him. Uh, he's very uh, impressive. And some rule changes that we have, right? We just come out of some rule changes. And then, though, we're going to talk about the train wreck. And we're not talking about this show. The show? <laughs> oh, okay, because that's every Saturday. We're going to have... Uh, Mr. Fulcher, come on here and tell us about just what do you do when you come up on a train wreck like that. And that's, it's, yeah, I'm that's, not sure. I, I wouldn't know even know where to start. You know, it's not like a car wreck. You you call a tow truck and they call tow, you know, tow it away. You're probably talking about cranes and all kinds of stuff. So if I would have been the first one on that scene, like when it happened, I am telling you the first thing I would have done was called Dan Fulcher. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny stuff. <laughs> I don't know if Fulcher know how to do this. That's what I would have said. So does nine one one directly call his phone or? Well, I, yeah. <laughs> it on mine. I just pull the name up and say, "Hey, we, we got a problem out here," and he'll be there. Well, that's good. That's that's nice to know that somebody knows what to do in that situation, except for just you put your toe between your legs and cry. No, I'd grab a lawn chair and said, "Somebody's <laughs> going to figure this out." <laughs> And been like every other dummy in the world and grab a cell phone and said, I'm gonna film I'm gonna film this. Yeah, I'm sure Put you know the probably hundreds of cars went that way just to see what was going on and that probably just makes more of a mess. So <laughs> we'll, You uh, know, I stayed away from there on purpose, but you know that's what everybody oh, did. Yeah. What's going on? Let's go over there and take yeah. a look at that. Well a buddy of mine, he lives <laughs> in Elkhart and it was I don't know, it was was it like a ten o'clock at night or 10 30 at night and he said uh he thought his uh, stepson was beating on the wall or something so he's yelling at him and he said oh i wasn't doing anything and kept doing it well that's what it was i guess it probably shook the whole town of elkhart so yeah that's going to be interesting to get that some information on that uh, a little maybe behind the scenes action uh what's going on in the sports world today uh well, do we know there's a there's a horse race today. Oh, there is. Yeah. Is that yeah. the Preakness? Yes, it is. Yeah. And who won the Kentucky Derby? I uh, <laughs> can't remember right now. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was like two weeks ago. You guys should have covered it last week. Uh, we did. We're doing the I'm sure we did. Yeah. Yeah, we had Grand March. We had the horse race. That was, yeah, that we was two weeks ago. Last that week. was two weeks ago, bud. That was two weeks ago, and then last weekend. Well, last weekend we had some stuff going on, too. I don't write this stuff down. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why we have you. Maybe we thought you, you come here with some knowledge. Yeah, well, uh, you know, when you take a week off, you just kind of forget everything. You know, you get out of the swing of things. But uh, I'm back, and we'll get back in the swing of things. Uh, like I said, it is graduation day today at the high school, uh, 11 o'clock, so I'll be have to scoot on out of here you know when i'm done as well as you because yeah, you have get to get in your monkey suit and uh monkey suit and stand around yeah. uh, so i don't know what, exactly what i'll do but i'll do something well i'll tell you what joe let's go ahead and take a break because <laughs> i mean we we're going to hopefully we're going to bring on 
Danny? hopefully Dan has about 50 minutes worth of... Uh, <laughs> oh, Danny? <laughs> I'm telling you right now, we can shut our things off. Danny will talk, and we'll have to tell him to leave around noon. Exactly what I'm looking for. That guy can talk. So, all right, let's take a commercial break. We'll come back. We'll have Dan Folcher on with us. So stay tuned. You're in the Cheap Seats, 96.3 FM. Kind of looks like Neil Peart sitting over there. <laughs> Give him some drumsticks. Neil Peart. Peart. Welcome back to the Cheap Seats, 96.3 FM. We are at Joe Ryan Country Financial. Scott Kirby, Joe Ryan, Lloyd Kirby, and Jim Ash. And Dan Folsher. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Uh, Dan's coming in this morning to talk to us a little bit about some wrestling news. And what Joe really brought him in for, because he's nosy, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the train wreck that happened uh, south side of town uh, over by Elkhart. But before we get to that, Dan, uh, National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yep, I, uh, I, I guess that's what happened when you get old. So, you get in the uh, Hall of Fames? You get in the Hall of Fame. They, they, they say, here's for your achievements. But in the background, they're also going, it's time. Yeah, well, <laughs> are you going to quit now? Are you going to retire? And, yeah, they're trying to push you out, aren't they? Uh, it isn't going to happen. It isn't going to happen. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've got to two more years at the high school. Uh, but I've got grandsons that are wrestling in youth, junior high. And I'm getting such a kick. And I, I just adore watching them wrestle and being a part of it. You know, with uh, you know Justin sure. and Jason, Walt, you know, Coach. Uh, and Dawson, I, I just enjoy being around them, and uh, you know, coming from that, uh, actually, wrestling's a lot of, of who I am, and has brought me from where I am. Uh, uh, wrestling's really done that for me. And you got a little wrestling mat in the garage, don't you? I do, yeah. I do, it's, I do. It's I full do. go I in do. that garage. It is it? full go. Yeah, for adults too. Absolutely, but uh, we have the pads on the wall for the fall down zone, so, <laughs> so you won't hurt yourself that way. Well, it might be something we want to film over there at some point in time Let's because we could have. Uh, Lloyd and Scott wrestle, or bring uh, Jake back. Jake, Mr. Right. Jake would like to wrestle. At a word, someone. That'll good work. Good idea. No sumo outfits, but yes. <laughs> bring Burger in, and he can wrestle. <laughs> and a his choice of people. I still. I won't be there wrestle. that day. I still would not want to wrestle Matt Burger. <laughs> oh, I saw a picture the other day of the gardeners and oh. Burger, and I was trying to figure out who was the meanest one. Oh my, uh, yeah, they, they could smile looking at a, <laughs> a head throw. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's kind of lead up to this National Wrestling Hall of Fame. When mm -hmm. did you start wrestling? I wrestled. I started wrestling. Oh boy, I hate to say. Oh. That. I started wrestling in 1969 at Lincoln, and it was Pete Brand. He was here for one year, and I was fortunate. My sophomore year was Floyd B. Also, National Hall of Famer came in, and when I was a senior, there was a, a young, little chubby, fat guy that come in called Dave Clem. <laughs> <laughs> who is now also I, I remember somebody locked the front door yeah yeah you're not kidding. I remember when I was a senior 145 pounds and he was a freshman 245 could just pound him and then his senior year when Floyd called about nine or ten of us together to to push him for the state finals I went in and popped him upside the head and when he took me down every vertebrae from my neck to my fanny come apart <laughs> went back together and I realized I had woke the sleeping giant oh yeah. he's something that guy's an animal Still, uh, oh. I still kind of wonder sometimes if we shouldn't have his, uh, if he shouldn't have something up there in that uh, trophy case. You know, I mean, I, it's on the Olympic team. Well, he made the Olympic team, right? And then he, they didn't have him. That year. He was one that uh, that beat uh, Baumgartner. Yes. Yeah, he beat he beat Baumgartner. Uh, Bob Hart's a pretty tough character. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Dave's an interesting guy. We'll have to. We've had him on here. I think yeah. talking about Lincoln College wrestling. But we should have him on here and talk about. Yeah. his career because it was pretty good very humble well apparently he doesn't know anything about train wrecks or you would have had him on <laughs> exactly right that's a that's a show for a different day <laughs> okay so tell the truth about re wrestling exactly people. right <laughs> so you uh wrestled in high school did you continue your career in college i did not as, okay. as soon as that i had got done uh wrestling in high school then i realized that uh, you know you lose your last match and it's official's fault and i wanted to become an, a wrestling official and i made my dad a promise that i'd work the state tournament someday then got into working with my dad you know in auto mecha uh, mechanics and that stuff and uh, uh he as a city councilman he was on the always on the fire and water uh, and police commission and um the wreckers used to go out and pull the cars apart there wasn't such a thing as a hearse tool 
And that's, that's true. And I remember going with my dad and I got hooked on it. I remember one day I told him, I said, Dad, I, I'm sorry, I want to be a firefighter. Back then you were a fireman. You know, now you're a firefighter. So um, uh, as soon as, as I became a firefighter, got in emergency services, I knew that was my niche. That, that's where th that I wanted to be. So I got into, and then uh, officiating. And I was able to, now I'm starting <coughs> my 40 third year of officiating and I made dad that promise I wanted to work the state tournament and uh, 14 years later I got my first letter uh, to work the state finals and uh, you know what let's just to, to let everyone know what a big deal it is you know when I went over state championships this year and, and you are a big deal there thank you're you. a Thank big you. deal running around in charge of stuff making calls um, since 1997 I've been a head clinician of wrestling and um, uh, National Federation, Dave Ganaway, a wonderful mm -hmm. friend of mine, and, and all he an advocate for for wrestling. So uh, at, a, at an early age, I got asked to be part of uh, the clinicians, help develop the clinics as we know it uh, now. Uh, and then um, was fortunate enough that when I got the state tournament, that I, I seized the opportunity, meaning that too many young officials get it. And they get it by talent, and they don't get it by maturity. And when we get there, that it's about themselves. Mm -hmm. And finally, I was old enough that when I got it, that you, you coddled it like a baby. And then you take care of it, and, and you know that the sport, you know that the wrestlers, you know the coaches are bigger than you. And uh, once, once you take care of it, Ed Hightower, a very good friend of mine, realized and, and taught me a lot on how uh, the higher the match goes, the higher the crowd gets, the more you go into a tunnel. And I do this as you're getting ready to make the call. It's like, wait, wait, wait. That's two. Don't you mess it up. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Good call. You know, and a lot of people may be booing or carrying on. You go, man, I can't believe 12,000 people don't know what you're talking about. And, 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 <laughs> but, and it's, it's, you know, that's what you've got to do and working with your assistant. So i uh, been lucky enough. Uh, then I went into Illinois Hall of Fame, National Hall of Fame. And, uh, uh, and, and God just kept blessing me more and more and more to where now I work. Uh, my 38 state final, uh, three more than some guy from New Jersey, and uh, eight more than the nearest guy in Illinois. So I'm lucky enough to to have hit that. I want to do 40, uh, and then when I hit 40, you be won't be able to quit. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> He's had enough. Yeah, now, I will be. I will quit officiating. But I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm. And I, I don't have a problem with helping with advice on rules. Just like yesterday, we sat for all day long with all clinicians and rules interpreters explaining it. Uh, but I am really looking forward to coaching. Um, that there is such a, a thrill uh, when my grandson, and then when his friends, not just my grand grandson, but grandsons, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, his friends and 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 that that seeing that develop. You know, we don't make millionaires from wrestling, uh, but we make good young men and good young women now from that sport. Yep. Well, you talk about the 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 conversion from refereeing to mm -hmm. coaching on right. the other side. A lot of people don't realize uh, there's a lot of people out there that watch the sport and mm -hmm. maybe coach it and coach their kid, root on their kid. They don't understand the other side of it as a ref and how difficult mm -hmm. it really is to make that call. I ref football for GFL, and it, it's completely different. You know, it's when you're coaching, you see different things than you do when you're refing, and absolutely, you're not going to make every call correct. So it's no. got to be it's got to be frustrating. And like you said, you can't believe how twelve thousand fans don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Feel the same way. These guys are yelling about a call you made, and you're just you laughing to yourself like these guys are <laughs> idiots. They have no idea what they're talking about. So. It's going to be a little sure. relief on you. It's going right. to be less stressful, you know, and be able to maybe enjoy, not that you don't now, but enjoy it a little bit more when you're coaching than refing. And you see a whole new side of it. Yeah. You see the, the, the other side. And, um, you know, the three years I've been helping the youth, and um, people go, boy, you really give the officials a hard time. I, I, I have yet to say a word to an official. I don't. I don't. Not going to go there. Well, uh, you you yeah. sometimes have to bite your tongue because obviously you know the rules. and I've it swallowed it twice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and he can still talk. That's what I'm saying. He can talk. This little slap upside the head and he spits it right back yeah. out. But that's got to be a challenge as well, you know, when you yeah. when you know what you're doing and the guy that's out right. on the mat necess doesn't necessarily know what he's doing. It's gotta be, that's got to be challenging, to, like you said, right. swallow and your tongue. 
I'm learning to even make that a, a, a hopefully a developmental process is when the match is over with and talk to the officials about right. what they should be looking for. Here, here's what you should do. Um, here's what's going to lead up into that because, uh, you know, I mean, it really, it, it's an amateur sport. And uh, I one time went online and, and uh, you know, Illinois Matt Men, and they had their closed circuit, you know, and they kept talking about it. And, and they expect us to be perfect, you know. And I, I looked all the way through and I said, I don't find anybody, a uh, wrestling official's name that ends in Jesus in Illinois. So <laughs> we are not perfect. And we're going to make mistakes. And, and we love wrestling. So it's the world's, we call, best amateur sport. Just put it in perspective. You know, yes. we're going to make mistakes. Absolutely. I make a living from 911 emergency management from mistakes that are made. So, uh, you know, as long as people learn to, to learn from your mistakes, I make them all the time. <laughs> Ask my wife. Yeah. Well, we know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of, well, we want to go to commercial. We want to jump into the train. Well, wreck. let's, let's, we let's take a commercial because I got a feeling the train wreck's going to probably take us to the end of the show because I know you're very. Um, what would you say? Very uh, handsome. No. Intelligent. I don't even know what to exactly. say. Exactly. Let's take a break. One. Come back. We're going to talk about the uh, the derailment here on the south side of Lincoln. So stay tuned. You're in the cheap seats. Nice six point three FM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pep in your step. Welcome back to the Cheap Seats, 96.3 FM. You can watch us online later on, WLCOnline.com. Well, you'd want to. You might want to check that out. With Dan Fulcher here at Joe Ryan Country Financial. Scott Kirby, Joe Ryan. Uh, Dan, before we get to the, the derailment, uh, you want to throw out some real changes. And one I'm very disappointed about is no more flying squirrel. <laughs> That's yeah. true. And that we're going to demonstrate, for those of you online, we might <laughs> have you demonstrate on Kirby. <laughs> I, I would need a small trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, big, the big change is coming this year in wrestling. Uh, number one, uh, probably the biggest one you're going to see right away is now as long as the offensive guy has his knees on the mat inbounds, you can pin or get near fall points even if the defensive guy is on, on the mat on his back. Forever, uh, both scapulas and shoulders, parts of uh, one of those had to be in bounds to get near fall or pin. Uh, now, I mean, you can totally have your shoulders out of bounds a foot, and the other guy's got his knees on the mat. Now, if he goes up on his toes, you're going to be out of bounds. But he keeps the knees in, uh, you know, you're going to see a pin. Uh, they can't touch the floor or table or, you know, any obstruction, but that's going to be pretty wild, and that's going to be sure. going to be exciting. Uh, souffle and salto, bye-bye. No more souffles where I grab your arms uh, and from the back or the standing position. Anybody that, that uh, remembers the, the, the Chris Taylor and the Russian guy, that move is a picture, and that's all you're going to see it from now on. Uh, flying Squirrel. Coleman, young man from Oak Park River Forest, made this big in Illinois and then took it to the collegiate level. He literally would stand there. He'd dive over you. Halfway over, he'd wrap around your waist and then go to the mat and roll you backwards. <laughs> uh, and it was so strong and quick, he could do it. It's gone. Uh, so they're, they're really, really making Last year, the arm traps. So the throws, moms, dads, you're on the fence of wrestling. Your kids can come on out. They can do it. We've made it a lot safer place. The old Neanderthals are going to have a hard time with it because uh, uh, you can still lateral drop, but uh, anything that takes you straight up in the air with uh, pressure and, and you don't even have to have arms trapped. No arms, one arm, especially both arms, it's going to be called illegal right away. Now, is it a point against the other? Yeah, you give the other wrestler a point. Okay. See, and then you have four penalties. It's one, one, two, and then if you commit your fourth penalty, then you're disqualified. So it's it's a big deal. It's a, it's it's a big deal. What change you feel needed to happen, or is it a good change? Federation felt though, because we're safety. We we, we concussions, concussions in all sports. You know. <laughs> Why are we wrestlers like we are, right? <laughs> we just kept wrestling. So, uh, but we had shoulder separations, arm breakage, and a lot of concussions. So, uh, the arm trap last year saved a lot. Uh, this year with souffle, salto, flying squirrel, well, again. So, but we give you out of bounds a little bit more room to, to make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, and I, I think you're going to see a lot more uh, excitement, a lot more scoring. Yeah, it's like anything. Baseball, one scoring. Uh, sure. you know, sports want, want to see more scoring. So, it'll be a little late for John Oaks. To, to <laughs> that it is. I just had lunch with John uh, this week, and he uh, told me he came from 
Doc Herons. And Doc said he needed uh, both knees replaced, a hip replaced, and a shoulder. And I said, oh. what did you do? And he said, I told him I'd do it later. He just walked <laughs> out. <laughs> I remember playing fast pitch softball. John was playing on the Baptist church uh, team. Right right there's a thought process. Okay, <laughs> His dad was a Baptist minister. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, and, and, and I blocked the plate on him, and he rolled me to the <laughs> fence and i was so happy i stood up with the ball and go hi you're still out but oh my gosh it was a freight train coming in and he loved you being there i'm telling you right now oh yeah yeah, yeah. he he was he was just glad to pound me down so absolutely that's yeah. funny stuff mm. all right dan uh moving on to joe's segment here you're the you're also the director of the 911 and logan county ems so ema the, ema yeah, right jim you said EMS. EM. That's okay. Emergency management. Some say say emergency management services. It's emergency management agency. Okay. EMS is medical emergency man. Uh, uh, um, emergency medical services like the paramedics and the EMTs for the fire departments. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you do there, and then we'll get to the. Uh, he does it all. Well, no, I, I, I'm just, I'm just fortunate, and and then when it comes to 911 service, the emergency management, um, I get a lot of awards and a lot of acclamations because I stand on giant shoulders. I, I have people that work for me that are fantastic, you know, and Mark Mann, Terry Story, Kendall Carruthers, Bucky Washam, Cheryl Hedrick, and and I'm just talking about management. And then I got nine, uh, ten more uh, dispatchers in there that do a wonderful job. So. Um, do you know every four minutes and 50 seconds we have a call to service in Logan County? Just to Which is know. amazing. Every yeah. four minutes and 50 seconds. Some type. Traffic stop, 911 call. Um, uh, something happens every four minutes and 50 seconds in Logan County. Amazing. We went 11 times busier than when we started 1993 with 911. Nobody else knows any n- number, you know, and um, uh, so, but uh, emergency management agency, both are blended together. So obviously when the 911 called to come in for the Elkhart train, um, they got the fire departments, they got the law enforcement, the EMS headed that way, and then my phone did ring. And uh, it was a yak. Y'all come. Uh, I mean, everybody, uh, I, I remember calling the rest of the law, everybody in the office, and they says, what do we need? I said, everything we got, you know, so let, let, let's go. Um, Unfortunately, I've seen a lot, you know, in Logan County alone. We've had, uh, since 93, 41 local, 19 gubernatorial, and six federal declarations. This is the third train derailment that I've been on. And, uh, um, but by far, this one was, was the largest. I said the largest as, huh? Oh, yeah, largest amount. So when, it, when they're telling me, uh, the words to me was, multiple cars have derailed on their side, and there's a chemical spill in the area. Uh, so now you talk about social media social media wow on the way there my phone is just lit up with a good informant person that I just laid it put it up on on, on my dash and I'm hearing so much on the way there it's unreal 50 minutes after we got there and got things set up then we did our first press conference because if we didn't the social media was just going to take it and run sure. with it you you got you have to do that nowadays so uh when we got that call and and uh, and we're on the way yeah um you know i'm old but if you think that my heart wasn't in my throat there for a minute waiting for a blevy waiting for an explosion waiting for that chemical spell that they're saying has turned into something lethal or for real uh we're gonna have a lot of loss of life and in the back of your mind you're already thinking 18 cars derailed uh, there's a very very great chance of injury or loss of life and you so you head over there and what's mm-hmm. the what's the first thing you have to do you. Well, information. First thing that I'm going to do is go uh, get into the incident command, uh, talk right with them, and I and I, I I hope I don't forget names, but I probably will forget. You know, and Mark Landers from the sheriff's department had already met, and Jay Akers, the fire chief from Elkhart. Kudos to those guys. They'd already had uh, incident command was being set up. Uh, state police was on its way, and when Nate Miller that got there, uh, unified command. Everybody th- thinks somebody's in charge. Well. Fire's in charge of fire, law enforcement's in charge of law enforcement, you know, EMS is in charge of that, emergency management. My, I'm, I'm the mortar and the brick. Whatever the rules and the guidelines are, my job is to help facilitate what you want. And then the big thing is to get the news media, get, 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 that, get, that, you know, get that big bear f- fed because it's going to go find something to eat if you don't. So make sure that information and truthful always tell the truth if you try to hide something or you try to manifest an idea uh that that's going to be generated it's not right it's it's going to get you and now is it a different situation simply because it is the railroad 
right like because they have their own rules too right oh yeah and, and they have come light years i mean uh, the railroad used to be like they thought that they were <laughs> from berlin or russia and we're going to run the whole sure. thing and and they found out that they're still living in america and they still have to work with us so we've had uh, we've had uh, amtrak problems uh with the ice and uh but they were fantastic so when i, I got there i i uh, still remember getting the mobile command vehicle from uh, with kindle and i said it's time to load the gator up and kindle is his first big call he's looking at me goes why do we need the gator and i go well every you're, you could have a half mile to three quarter mile train and every sure. time that you got to run down and find out something information wise you're going to be real tired so as soon as we got there we put the conductor on the gator with a firefighter and radio and they did a perimeter uh, a perimeter look at it but we had enough factual information as we pull up uh, the the crossing building was destroyed there was there was uh, cars uh, down the line rolled and on the side. The smell you were hearing was was smelling was automobiles that had engine oil. If you trans- could hear smell, I was going to say so you're yeah. kind of like Aquaman. <laughs> You could hear noise and smell. <laughs> you could smell it in a aroma. Uh, I love it. You have one little mistake you're on. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it was like, just it's, funny. It's like, yeah. Do not, do, not be a, do not be an attorney. All right. <laughs> Boom. Gotcha. Uh, but anyway, you could you could smell, uh, just, and it wasn't a smell of pungent. Uh, what it was was there was uh, um, Audis and there was Escalades, real cheap vehicles. <laughs> on three three cars that had rolled and your first view is you see this automobile that's crushed underneath this train right at the crossing so what are you thinking yeah. you know it, it hit so then you look down the track and i'm thinking what parking lot did he run into before you know he got there so you're thinking did that cause the wreck or is there other could there be could there be people inside there that would be trapped and then very quickly the information from the conductor says no those are cars that were on the train those those are those are part of me and then you still look down you see a power lines that are that are in the area could they be energizing the side of the train so please firefighters do not touch the train then you're beginning to think is there chemicals or product inside the train that could then get energized by the heat and electricity from that uh, so very quick uh, the the manifest and the bill of ladings and the MSDS's that's the material safety uh, data sheets were sent to the 911 center and instant command and we look through there to find out now lucky we begin at being super lucky to have 18 cars derailed or rolled on their side into a ball and not one of those 18 had a hazardous material on them now car 55 and 56 had nothing much just just alcohol and then another corrosive 28,000 gallons of alcohol and 25,000 gallons of uh of a fertilizer, you know, style uh, that when mixed, mixed. I mean, this this could be another Crescent City, but they were they were away from the area that was so it was disconnected that they wouldn't get the energy. Uh, they went ahead and uh, Silco did shut the the power down, and uh, so pretty quick we begin to breathe a little bit easier. But then there's secondary things. Um, you work with law enforcement. Is, is um, was this an on purpose? Sure. Let's be real. Did the NTSB get well, involved? N- now they they will through the railroad company. Uh-huh. You know they they would. They don't send their, someone right no, there. No, no. You actually had railroad. You had ISP. You had railroad law enforcement, and you had federal law enforcement. And I'm telling you what, they were there by two o'clock. By two o'clock, uh, the the cleanup crews was there by three. By the next morning, there was only four cars left on the tracks. That's amazing. Yeah. So then the next thing that we're thinking of is could we have stowaways? You know, when you got enough freight cars that are that that empty, you you could have stowaways. Could you imagine thinking, boy, oh boy, I jumped up in a in an Audi, I'm going to sleep all the way to Chicago, and all of a sudden I'm rolled up into a ball from a train now. Yeah, <laughs> that'll teach is. you not to, to get a ticket. So, uh, but but you, then you had to say, yeah, there was no injuries now, but so that when the cleanup crew is and the power lines were de-energized, you're still going to have to check and see was there somebody else inside there. Uh, obviously, it has to be treated like a crime scene because you don't know was it an on purpose. At the secondary side, uh, again, our fire services in this county, um, EMS, uh, law enforcement, not one person got upset with another. Whenever there was an idea that was shared, uh, unified command, uh, we, we took it, took it to heart, and go, you're right, 
Um, it's not like I'm in charge of the world. What can I do to help? And uh, very quickly, uh, good information. You're right. I think everybody from from Elkhart got up. <laughs> uh, um, at that time, then there was there was a few other people from Lincoln that drove down there, and uh, it, it did look like the opening day of the of the Logan County Fair. <laughs> there was so many so many people that were around and in the back of our mind we're thinking you know if you begin to be bully and you get out of here now it may be for the best of them but uh probably 15 minutes after that we uh that we went live and that uh we did you know we we picked a lot of people in in town with that are on facebook that live on facebook <laughs> so we fed them information Sure. And and uh, and then uh, I would say within 15 minutes you saw people leaving. Within an hour, 90% of the people are gone. Um, 45 minutes, all of the TV channels and the news media had been fed what they needed. We told them there'd be another press release coming in the morning, and good factual information come out, and people left. Uh, and we're in the back of our mind. We're thinking, clean up. We want to get you out here because there's two cars down here that I still don't like. <laughs> just have it in Logan County, let alone during a cleanup process that could, you know, where they crack, where they prop compromise. So then we sent in two hazmat teams that uh, went in, re-inspected those. Those were cleared uh, from the Logan County team as well as the uh, uh, actual then railroad hazmat team and everything was good to go that they could move them and, and get them out of here. How fast was the train going when it went off? You know, that's a... <laughs> Joe, that's the first person that asked me that. Now, I would guess that... I, I watch a lot of TV okay, shows. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, just keep in mind, Amtrak, you know, can crank it up to 110 sure. and open. And, and you see those signs in town could run 85 mile an hour. That's flying. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> a train? And, and those would have energized electricity still in the bottom of them uh, for hours if it had if it comes through town but i'm going to guess because uh, the conductor told me that when they went through the the gates that uh the disconnect light come on and what that means is there you have boom something has disconnected really yeah so it it, it disconnected and, and they slam on the brakes and it, they did look back and they saw the spaghetti happening and so at oh. car between car 12 and 13 huh, 13 uh that is where that is where that that did happen so and he he went uh several football fields ahead so i'm gonna guess that you know maybe at the at the 20 25 mile an hour range is what i would would guess maybe even less than that because they're they're coming through a town at that time and maybe you can't state this but it, <laughs> do you think more of a train problem than a track problem that's something we shouldn't talk about. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people saying both. Oh, there's a lot. There's those have all been redone. So they, right? they don't know for no. sure right now. Oh no, no, it'll be months. It. it will be months. You know, did did, did civilians come up and, and later on say, hey, yeah, you know, we we heard this or we heard that or or that speculate that sure. And and for me to say that, that's all it would be is a speculation. But uh, they did immediately uh, took. They have like a for better words a black box, <laughs> you know, inside the train, and and they took that. Uh, the conductor was also taken. And well, so I'm sure he goes right through away. a series of testing too. Oh, yeah, yeah. He shared with me everything that he now had to go through, and and um, uh, so he was headed. He was headed for that to be done. Well, that's interesting. My brother's an engineer out of Galesburg, so maybe he'll be here to t in town if you want to go talk to him and see if there you go. You know, yeah. And and it's critical that we not say what our speculations sure. are. Uh, yeah. The same thing with you know any law enforcement thing that we may help. Well, let's talk a minute about like when you're talking about getting rid of the taking care of the media feeding the bear and all yeah. that stuff taken care of right what's going to happen with these drones because if you're a local farmer over there that has one to check your fields right why not pop that up and just go over the top of that scene and or any scene yeah and for that matter and and you're mm -hmm. downloading stuff that's oh yeah I mean, what, yeah. what are we going to do with those? You're just going to see. Uh, well, I was thinking long-range shotguns, but uh, uh, but <laughs> you're talking about a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm not that good, so we'd have to be a machine gun. Um, well, you're going to see more and more of them, you know. And, and for us to think that we're not going to right now, when they first come out, uh, Illinois State Police and everybody told us uh, very quickly, you know, that don't don't fly them. You got to have the license. They can bring their own in. But uh, the sale of these things are incredible. Yes countrywide uh, more and more people own them and uh, we're in the we're in the era of this is mine don't tell me what I can do sure so uh, 
um, at that point in time, you're just going to see more and more of them. And they can definitely right. make a, like you're saying, you know, you're right. getting, I call it the OJ tape. When you're getting right. the OJ tape out and getting right. everybody over there, and that's right. coming over the top, and it could really, you know, make a mess of what you're trying to investigate. And here's also something I do, and maybe some people would disagree with me on this, but I think the more that you tell the people the, the truth, I think that when you come to the bear with the, with the news media, when you make them part of the team, I use words like, I need you too. Would you please help? Would you please help all the other, other news media move to this area? And we set an area up. Then I did know that there was a, 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 a very fast Facebook thing. The Facebook was blowing up. I took a news I took a news person and I stood him right there and I called another person back in Lincoln and I said you might want to listen to me on what I'm saying and then as I'm saying this I know that that's going on Facebook immediately on purpose that I wanted it so and then always make sure that whatever you're saying and you're talking about somebody or something always imagine that they're standing right next to you because now they got those long long range things that they can hear what you said you know and if i look at it and say boy i'm sure, I'm sure glad that joe ryan isn't here because he'd screw it up <laughs> you know so if you do that they're going to hear you so always stay professional on the scene no matter what and give the facts and bring the news media in as a team now law enforcement is totally different i mean you know take all what happened in beeson they, they had sure. to have they had to keep it different now this uh if that thing does erupt and it does blevy wow it's it's huge so let people know yes this can be bad and then as soon as you hear that that it isn't as bad as we think that this is a mess um you know that we're lucky people appreciate it. and as soon as we did that at midnight and we did a follow-up um it was just whew, things went quiet yeah it's all cleared up and done nice work right trains back up and rolling the tracks yep. are being used Yep. How well, long, long mm, 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 no, 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 not all the okay. way. Right now, they're still track. Um, <laughs> of all the times, we have buses that are coming from Springfield. They pick them up, and then they bus them into the Lincoln yes. Depot, and then they get back on the train and, That's and, okay. and, and, yeah. and go that way. So could they have waited a year when we got the depot fixed and we could have star cased oh. this, you know, showed it off. But no, right now, you know, could you imagine waiting for 20 minutes, you know, um, 200 people in the in well, the 20 person room. I saw yes. yesterday. I was wondering why there was a charter bus right, right there, and then right. it, Lincoln Depot was packed. I'm like, man, there's a lot of Lincoln people. Right. Right. Buses Chicago coming in and out. Yeah. Buses. It's they're they're shuttling back and they're forth. They're shuttling back and forth. Yeah, and you've had you could have had tickets purchased for a long time, and that's that's just right. what you're going through. So, so. they right. they get them to where are they picking them up at on the bus? The, yeah, the train coming out of St. Louis. Right. Where stops they, in Springfield. Stops in Springfield, and then the bus is waiting. For there, to here. they bring them here, and then you go north. So the the Amtrak from Chicago comes down here to Lincoln, turn around, goes back to Chicago. The ones at Alton and St. Louis comes up to Springfield, and goes back until they get that because kids, there's double track there. Right. Yes. You have you have and and yeah, that is a did. switching station right through that whole area. So and then they, they took the control box out. So there's a lot. So of the railroads got to have problems so right now getting that. Oh yeah. And that's backing some things up well now i have no uh other than watching remember when they put those tracks in they had to bring in that 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 uh, special machine yeah. that that actually then put the tracks down and yes. monitored and said it was wait because very when, cool when we had yeah when we had the auger go through the telephone lines up here why it took so long is they couldn't they couldn't take away dig out the by the tracks to fix them because it would compromise rail tracks they had to go a half a block each way bore down and then run the line through and re-splice them so that's why that took so long and we're out here it's gonna, gonna take a while now i have a funny for you all right the second day that they were picking things up and they went they did a clamp they did a clamshell on one of the escalades and they picked i mean that terrible 80,000 vehicle and they just <laughs> pick up the clam and they're putting it on the, the train it, it did set the OnStar off to our 911 center <laughs> so so we knew we knew immediately yeah it, it's okay yeah okay. you're but, already yeah trash we know we, we know where it's at but you still got to investigate because it was that another car that got into a wreck you know in that area while they're working right. and all but, but well I find uh, it very interesting and luckily you know uh, no one is hurt but you, 
for the most part, you see these train wrecks and all this stuff go on somewhere else. You know, you just look at it on the news and go, yep, somebody's taking care of that. That's why I found it very uh, interesting here that, you know, we got to send some of our local guys out there, and it, it can't be something that you now, train for. Did this, I haven't really been paying. Catch that pun? That was good. It <laughs> went right by that. <laughs> that was good. Well, I'm yeah, trying to. To ask an intelligent question. Oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> I said have, trying. Let's have complete <laughs> silence and let you get this out. <laughs> I said trying. Right. <laughs> but did this, I haven't really been pay, paying attention to the news. Had this made any national news or being, mm-hmm. you guys really nipped it in the butt so quick mm-hmm. and, you know, it didn't have a chance to brew. Did, was it more just local? Uh, no, we had, uh, we had KMOX to Channel 5 in Chicago that had called us but uh our office then real quick would do meet news briefs and uh fox news out of saint out of springfield then shared their video um and and what will also d d huh, i'm not gonna say derail what will deflate <laughs> what will the time what would deflate a news media is that it was positive and it was good and right. it was handled sure. exactly. well That's so yeah. so when that happened KMOX of chicago we were we were the filler uh, you know, not not the headline news. Now, had had that alcohol tank uh, blevied, had caught fire. Somebody had lost life. Um, you know, uh, um, uh, somebody had found out immediately that was on purpose. Then, if this was a terrorist event, terrorist event, there would have been 31 federal and state agencies that would have been sent to Logan County. And wow. then, with that, brings CNN and oh, all yeah. the all the, the you know the Air, higher tier. everything. Everything so. like like we did with the G family uh, murders mm-hmm. in Beeson um, for four days. The sheriff had uh, eleven satellite trucks, eleven satellite trucks that we had to deal with every night, every morning, on information for four days. And you know, and hats off to the sheriff oh. Nichols out there because you know you're not trained for that. I mean. You can have that situation come on, and then all the media right in your face all the time. I thought he did an excellent job of handling all that. Excellent job. And, you know, um, now, you were talking about this. Just so you know, uh, within the last six months, um, uh, the fire departments did a train derailment training. And right after the uh, G family uh, incident happened, we had just done a full-scale exercise and had just remodeled the EOC. I, I don't like building these things so that it can happen. <laughs> but but uh, we had just done that. So when that happened, that the sheriff and me, we'd, you know, where we're, we're going to set up then a, a unified command center. He knew that the incident command uh, there w- was was blocked off, and then we we fed and, and got the other uh, volunteers and people off to the firehouse away from it. And we were in the process. We were in the process of cleaning up from the tornadoes from uh, the, uh, the Wimsville through the Elkhart area of tornadoes. Then, yeah. So it's it's nonstop, and you're a. Uh in your it position, is. nonstop, it is. nonstop. And how old are you? Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Well, you don't look it. No. Nope. Know what I God. mean? <laughs> Thank you. I say he looks younger than <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm just you saying. Might, you might turn his mic off. <laughs> um, yeah. But you might feel it, but you don't yeah. look it. Oh, well, thank you. Now, I actually, because I keep going, I feel very well. I, I feel good. I like to shed about 12 pounds, but but I do feel I, I feel well. And I think a lot of that is work. You keep your mind going. You keep your body going. You stay active. I've Absolutely. seen the thing where people retire, and they just sit in a chair with a TV remote. And that's where, when I do retire from work and I do retire from officiating, uh, I want to continue coaching and, and, and being active and, uh, you know, golfing and, and doing that stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on. It's very interesting. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and really helped us out. You're a very impressive Nobody uh, wants to listen uh, to us. person with your accolades, and you've been running around. I, for a long time, I thought you owned the Lincoln Courier because it was always a picture of you. And I thought, well, I mean, he's some relation, so they keep putting him in there. and Because uh, it couldn't have been your looks, but they kept putting not. in. It could not. Uh, so, but anyway, I... Uh, I tell you, you do a lot around here to help take care of things when things go wrong. That's why I think it's well, funny. It's, it's nice to know that you guys are equipped and prepared when something like that does happen. A lot of people take that for granted, you know. If something tragic happens, you know, who do you look to? And, well, guess what? We, these guys are prepared, and obviously you're training for it, and you guys are well prepared, and, you know, it's it's good when there's not a whole lot of publicity about it because that right. means you nipped it in the butt and... You know, took care of the problem, and like you said, tell the truth right from the get-go, because with the media the way it is now, 
they're going to find the truth out and Absolutely. it's just going to make you look very you know, bad very, very bad, bad and no. just going to prolong the situation so right. sounds to me like you guys handled this to a T and you know that's it's comforting to know that you know people can you know be there when there's an emergency absolutely shout out and uh, you know to to the sheriff's department you know uh, mr landers wonderful job shout out to the fire chief jay acres you know, i i could even do talk about get uh, josh gasparini the fire chief at elkhart that mm -hmm. a month before we had a significant weather event that went through but uh ems um you know uh, nate miller uh you know what a great job by sp and 911 dispatchers, God love them. Uh, you know, the unsung You heroes. know, Nate was probably sleeping somewhere, right? He was uh, sure he wasn't working or up mowing or doing anything. You know, when he got there, he was so wide awake, he probably was. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but, but, I mean, and, and it was good. We're lucky. We're lucky we're trained. Illinois uh, is very rich in, in material and equipment. Horrible in finances, but, uh, but they're good in equipment and material. Well, Danny, thanks for being yeah, on. Tell absolutely. us all about it. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. And I don't want to say I hope to see you uh, down the road because then that probably <laughs> means something else happened. But, right. uh, yeah, very interesting. And congratulations. Yeah, you either had a problem or you've taken up wrestling. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. I uh, don't know where we're going to be next week. Uh, Stacy's Family Pharmacy. Stacy's Family Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Special <laughs> guest coming on next week. We might talk about it this week on some commercials. Special guests. Special guests. So we'll know at uh, 8.59 tomorrow next week. <laughs> oh, no, no. We already guests. know. Mm -hmm. All right. It's graduation day, folks. Uh, congrats to the 2017 graduation kids. Man, it's flown by. So, Joe, go get your monkey suit on. We'll see you next week from Stacy's Family Pharmacy. Good day. Yeah.